palliative care became a part of our team around the second embolization. And they, they began as kind of this other group that would take extra time to sit with us and really get to know us and kind of talk to us, you know, somebody to ask, like, how do you feel about what you just heard? You know, they would sort of come in after we met with a group or maybe they would have one or two members present when we were meeting with the neurology team um, and they would ask us, you know, if we had questions, how we felt about what was happening. And we sort of bonded that way in a very natural and human way. And as that, as that continued throughout all these procedures, um, when we came to the end, they were, they were very helpful in us making sure that we felt that we were being heard. Um, as we kind of shifted away from being so medically focused towards making sure that Sade was comfortable, yeah. that we were still feeling part of the team and feeling like everybody kind of knew where we were coming from and what we wanted for Sage, making sure that they were all communicating, even um, when we weren't present, to try and make that happen for him. Part of it too, Sage, because of the, um, the change in his treatment plan, um, because he had multiple brain surgeries, um, and he had five total, four of which occurred pretty close to each other. So he was on a good dose of, of painkillers. You know, he was on fentanyl for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, so packed. They came in to help us manage the medications. And then for the day that Sage passed, they were present to make sure that we were okay um, and that Sage was not in pain. You know, they, they played a very big role in making sure that it was, it was peaceful um, because we felt like after everything that Sage had endured, we, we absolutely did not want him to die having a seizure. So we wanted that controlled. Right. Um, and they were there to help um, respectfully outside of our room, but um, that was kind of the, the presence they played. But they, you know, I mean, palliative care, it's a very um, unique and multifaceted group. They have doctors, they have nurses, they have social workers. So medically speaking, we understood everything that was going on with SAGE. Um, we didn't need a lot of clarification. Um, but we didn't know what to expect in terms of planning for the future because that was impossible. So they helped uh, kind of paint that picture. And when it changed, when we got a new diagnosis or a new care plan or a new medication, we added that to the landscape that we were facing. And one thing I'd like to add as well is I remember very distinctly um, in many of our large meetings um, discussing Sage that the members of our palliative care team were, were eyes that I would go hmm. to when I was yeah. you know, looking for somebody who I knew was, you know, had us, who was there and really yeah. kind of standing with us amongst the enormous group of medical professionals. You know, it seemed like they were, they really saw us as people and as parents and it was a massive help to have them there. I was also, I mean, we needed that. We needed to be seen as his parents. We needed to be seen. We were living our life as like new parents to Sage in front of all these people in a hospital. 